clean all this stuff. You clean, I showed you how to clean the needle, and then I'll show you how to clean the spring, and then we'll see about cleaning out this tube. Okay, spring. This is easy. A little cleaner on this on this piece of scotch brite and just do this. Or you can take the the little wire wheel with the battery drill and clean it with that. Or you can use a, a, a fine wire brush, whatever you got. The idea is just clean the gunk off of it. It doesn't have to be shiny, it just has to have all the stuff knocked off of it, and it'll be fine. The tube. This has that very fine little orifice in the end, and that can get clogged up. Uh, don't attempt to take a needle or anything else and push it down in there and clean that out. You're not going to be able to do it. What you're going to need is something like this. I'm using brake cleaner, okay, with a, and they usually come with this little red plastic straw and what we're going to do is we're going to stick this straw down this tube and spray the heck out of it and that will dissolve the stuff that's baked on the, on the inside of here and clean out this little orifice. You'll see here in a minute. We've got our specialty little 50 cent bowl that we use to clean the rings off of the uh, uh, fuel burners. And I'm just going to use that and a paper towel. I'm going to take this, put the nozzle down inside it, and you're going to want safety glasses for this because it can spray all over the place. You want to wrap it with a paper towel up here at the end and spray it into the bowl. It's working. You can see it's, 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 the nozzle is clean. And as long as since I've got gunk all over this now, I'm just going to use that to clean everything. Probably should be wearing rubber gloves for this, but it's only going to be for a few seconds and it isn't really worth the effort to put them on right now. But this is a case of do as I say, not as I do, darn it. You should be wearing rubber gloves for this. Nozzle looks clean. That looks clean. And since I've got it here, I'm going to go over the spring. And set that aside. I already cleaned the rod, so that's done for now. Clean up your mess. So we got the caps. You probably can't see that, can you? Mm -hmm. Anyway. Okay, you got the pump, got the caps, got the, the needle dot rod, the spring, the tube, those are all clean now. Now we need to take this valve out of the tank. Again, you want to be cautious about this because it is brass and it's very easy to mess that up. I'm going to attempt to get to crack this loose using a wrench. If it's really, really tight, and they usually are, you might have to take this and turn it upside down and clamp 
this part in a vise and then turn the tank. I'm going to try to avoid that. So let's see if I can crack this loose. Yeah, it's on there. There we go. Okay, now it's going to come off. We got lucky. All you got to do is just break it loose after that. It'll just come out with your fingers. What we're left with, this is just the basic valve assembly. You see down here on the bottom of it, if we look close, it's got deposits on it. And in the bottom, if you look up real close, there is a very tiny, tiny hole right here in the bottom. And also, if you look up here, Above this, at the top, there's a hole right here. This sits in the fuel tank like this. Fuel level's about here. And what happens is you have this little valve on the side to tell where the instruction says lift it to light and then turn it down to burn. When you lift it up to light, what it's doing is it's blocking off this piece, this little nozzle right here. I'll turn it and you can see now it's open, lift it up, and now it's plugged shut. Okay, what's happening is this little lever is making a decision whether fuel gets sucked up from the bottom or remember the fuel levels about here is it's either your fuel getting sucked off the bottom or air and fuel is getting sucked through this hole to go out. And initially, when you go to light the stove, it's cold. So there's nothing to vaporize the fuel, no heat. So what it does when you lift this up is instead of sucking the fuel off the bottom, it takes the air and fuel vapor that's floating in the top of the tank and it pushes those out through the uh, nozzle assembly in order to initially light the stove. It's burning the air fuel mixture that's floating on top of the fuel inside the tank. After a minute or so, you close the load of the valve and this gets shut off and then fuel direct is getting sucked directly off the bottom of the tank and it's going into the nozzle assembly which is now hot and then the heat is vaporizing that liquid fuel and atomizing it so that it can be burned in the burner. Very clever little device that Mr. Coleman came up with. It allows you to take basically a cold stove and vapor in without having to vaporize the fuel or preheat it, get it to burn. Very nice system. So what we're going to do is we're going to clean this a little bit. On this valve, there's a nut right here. This is where the 5 16th wrench comes in. You can take that 5 16 and put it on here and you can pull this assembly off and clean the inside of it. So we'll do it this way. Half inch wrench, 5 16 A vise is actually better for doing this, but this came off pretty easily. Again, another needle valve, and just like the other one, it's got corrosion up here on the top where the air inlet is, and we don't want that. We want that to be clean. So, scotch bright, moving one direction only toward the end. And we just clean it. all it takes just a little bit now that I've got this apart I'm going to take the same brake cleaner and I'm going to spray some brake cleaner down in there and clean that nozzle out
really don't want to spray myself with this. Doesn't take much. And I could see it's spraying uh, brake cleaner out the end, so I know it's not plugged up. And we'll just use this brake cleaner to clean the outside. And call it good. We'll stick it back together. There we go. Hold it with the half inch. And tighten it down with the 5 sixteenths. Don't have to wrench on it really tight. Remember, it's brass. You don't want to mess it up. Okay, it's tight. Okay. That's all you're doing on the inside there. Just cleaning and then remove the this, the fuel suction valve uh, line. Clean that rod inside it. And make sure that the nozzle's clean and put it back. That's the maintenance. We've cleaned the valve. We've cleaned the lighter, light, and run valve. Reassembled it. Everything else is done. Got the caps done. Pumps done. It's ready to go back together. One more thing. Remember how hard it was to get that thing off the tank? I'm going to put a little bit of anti-seize compound on it. Just a hair, just a little dab. So that if it comes out again, it'll come out a little easier. And we'll put it back in the tank. Oh, I almost forgot. While we're doing this, this is a good time to take a flashlight and shine it down inside the tank and look in it and see if you can see any rust. This tank's nice and clean. Okay. If you have rust inside the tank, you've got to clean that out. And the best way to do that is go down to your local sporting goods store, buy a package of BBs for a BB gun, and then you come back home and you take a funnel, which I don't have, mm, can't find it. Uh, no, anyway, here's the funnel. You take this fuel tank, put this in here drop a small handful of BBs down inside the tank. Plop. And then pour in about half a cup of uh, denatured alcohol, uh, acetone, lacquer thinner, something like that. Plug it up, put a thumb over both openings, and just shake it. And shake those BBs around in there with that acetone, and it'll knock all the rust off, and then you just drain it out. You want to make sure, though, when you're done, that you get all the BBs out. Don't leave any rattling around in there. That'll clean the inside of your tank. So, let's get this back together. And we'll start reassembling the stove. And, well, no, we won't. we got to paint it first, don't we? So, we'll get this back together, and we'll set it aside. And the next video will be doing... 
we'll be doing the paint and the reassembly. Now, you saw me take all this apart, so it's putting it back together is actually pretty easy. Just the reverse of taking it apart was, I'm going to take this right here and put it all back together. That will do for the moment, and we'll get this back in place. Give it another three quarters of a turn. And I'll do that off camera. We'll just spin it around another three quarters of a turn, put this back in here, and we'll put some oil on this pump cup, slip it back into place, and it'll be done. Okay, come back to you in a few minutes. Okay, we're back. One more thing I wanted to show you just before we're done here. Got the pump installed, caps back on, got the, the burner assembly reinstalled. Uh, everything's in. I want to talk to you a little bit about this. Remember that little needle on the end. You got to want to be, when you're assembling this part, you want it to be very, very careful, just very gently. And if you feel any resistance at all, stop. Just gently feed it in. Make sure that this valve is all the way open. And then tighten it up. Now, this is a fine line here. If you really cinch down on this, you're going to find that you won't be able to close or open this valve because you'll squeeze that packing down to where the valve handle won't turn. But if you leave it too loose, it's going to leak fuel. So don't try to tighten this part down until it's tight. Just tighten it up one finger's worth. That's all. That's a good starting spot. That will allow this valve to turn with a little bit of resistance and tighten the packing down. It may still drip a little bit. If it drips a little bit, tighten it just a hair more. But you got to remember, the more you tighten it down, the tighter this valve is going to be. So you don't want it so tight that it can't turn, but you don't want it so loose that it'll drip. It's kind of it's a, a touchy-feely thing. Just like I said, initially tighten it down just one finger's worth until it's just barely tight with one finger. Call it good, and then try it. When it comes time to light the stove, you'll see if it drips, tighten it down just a little more. If it doesn't drip and the valve opens and closes with just a little resistance, it's good. Just leave it. All right. With that, our fuel tank is done and it's ready to go. Next step is paint. So I'll see you all in part number three, paint. Or is it four or five? At this point, I'm not sure. We'll see. Okay, catch you in a bit. <laughs>